Hello there, everybody, and welcome. So, what's new? The beta for Dwarf Fortress Adventure mode has been launched. So, I took a dive into it, so you don't have to. So, it is a beta. That's the very first thing that we have to say. So, I want to talk about the things that are working here and which are really pretty completed and totally worth looking at so let's get started talking about the character creation so in case you aren't familiar with all this the dwarf fortress adventure mode allows you to pick up any world that you have created in the game create a singular individual person and go explore that world. You can explore the fortresses that you've built and generally you have the entire world at your disposal and you can write your own legends there. We have for now here not really anything happening. There will be an in-game tutorial if I read these uh, things correctly. Difficulty levels allow you to have more or less starting points if you are new to this totally go easy difficulty because it's a lie. It ain't easy. No, <laughs> it's Dwarf Fortress. So we're going to go over here and now you get to select what kind of species you want to play. Dwarf, Elf, Goblin or Human or any other intelligent wilderness creature. This is the point that made me most happy. You can be a Black Mamba Man or a Dingo Man. You can be an Elephant Man or you can be just a Grackle Man. Whatever tickles your fancy, you can impersonate it and have some good old adventures with it. This is where Dwarf Fortress Adventure most go, goes places. So, Elephant Mans, by the way, are... Oh, elephant Men, I'm sorry. Are stupidly powerful because they have a lot of, uh, well, bulk and strength. But you can play whatever you want to. There is uh, even the possibility of creating a party of people so you can have your band of adventurers. We get to select where we're originating from. That specifies where you can start, but also specifies what kind of gear will be at your disposal. So we select the home place of ours and occupation. These so far don't play any bigger role because reasons I'll get into later. Beliefs aren't built in yet, and here comes the, the spicy part. So, skills. We get to select a couple of body, uh, of, of attributes, and, well, skills, things we've learned. So, for my regular go-to fighting thing, strength is good for damage, agility is good for dodging stuff, toughness and endurance is good for lasting, uh, outlasting damage and recuperation is good for healing. You want to have some spatial sense and some kinesthetic sense to be a good fighter and after that so up to you. We have two different pools for that so we can really go deep into the shenanigans here. So just building up a casual swordsman, picking up swordsman, fighter, or shield user because that's also very important armor user and dodger and well from that point on with these skills you're decent at fighting it's uh, now up to you how many how much of a difficult start you've chosen and uh, what you want to play but that's a pretty solid package if you just want to head out and wreck some uh, wreck some havoc so we get to randomize our appearance and here we also get our personality sheet which influences our needs. So far this is only for fluff's sake, I don't know how much impact it really has. Here we get to select our equipment. Just as a side note, you can only pick up what is available at your hometown. So if you start out with the elves, you only get wooden gear. So that might be something you might want to think about. But overall, just get your help yourself to some gear and get into adventure. This part of the game already works out so gosh darn well. It's really fun. You can individualize your starting gear however you want to. Just uh, keep in mind to bring some food and some containers. This game is very uh, precise when it goes down to containers containers, every item has to be stored somewhere, so it is all the Dwarf Fortress level of detail that we love and we are used to. So we can also pick up animals, here again only what is uh, for the culture in question available, and 
The real charm in this lies in the fact that you can prepare a start with the fortress mode for your adventures by building a fortress that has all the things that you want to have, theoretically. And then it's uh, off to the adventure we go. So here, at this point, I want to talk about what's in the box so far. We have a pretty solid graphical user interface, allowing us to do all manner of fancy things. We can climb, we can jump, we can specify what kind of movement we want to have, we can talk to people, the conversation menu is pretty detailed, we can right-click and get pretty interesting contextual menus. So all in all, this is very accessible and intuitive, although overwhelming. Want to know why? So let's start a conversation with Peklod, the planter. So first of all, we need to go twice for it. And uh, oh, I, I misclicked now. I'm sorry. So you see it's uh, here. Continue conversation. I simply walked from the same tile with him. And now there's a couple of things we can talk about. <laughs> so these are mostly just... Uh, procedural generate no these are all procedural generated things some of them even don't have any meaning but you can go for fluff's sake down the road but most things don't have any game impact so but the grid for a solid conversation menu is there i don't know where it will take us though in the longer run because it is incomplete i'm gonna talk about that in a hot minute but first keep talking about what's done here. So when we click travel, we get to look at our environment. That's a really, really cool feature, giving us a perspective about how the environment of a human settlement looks like. And we can view the environmental map. The fun part here is, as you see, most of it, this sepia stuff here is all unknown to my character. So. Unlike Fortress Mode, we get to explore, and unlike Fortress Mode, we also get to see all the beast caves and whatnot. So we can go for monster hunt and, well, we can go for goblin pits and all those things. There is a lot to discover, but it's all procedural generated and you feel it. So what's also in the box? is the combat system so i want to go give you a a glimpse of what's uh, here so let's attack some harmless people around us so we're going to attack the planter of course the game asks me now if i want to do that uh, you shouldn't do that but uh, for the sake of demonstration so now we get to select whether we want to strike or wrestle the guy. If we want to strike the guy, we can now select which body part we want to attack. And we also get an evaluation how likely it'll be to hit. So, as you can see, we can be very, very, very precise. We can try to rip out their ears, we can try to hack off their thumbs. We can just go for an arm, or we can take uh, a punch at their teeth. There's really everything in the box, and if you have a legendary fighter, you can some do, do some really ridiculous things. So, when we've selected where we want to attack, so let's uh, take the... Let's take a leg, for example. Now we get to select what kind of attack. So we, we could actually just pummel strike the guy to knock him unconscious. We don't need to land a killing blow. We also can specify what kind of attack we want to lead. And there's multi-attack. The, the, this system is deep, fun, and a little bit mysterious. But, uh, well, it's, I think, the most fleshed out part of the current beta of the adventure mode, and I think it's been a wise choice to flesh this out so entirely. So if you now go for a slash, so you slash, and we uh, we destroyed this uh, poor sucker's leg. So we can now walk away from our horrible deeds, and uh, you know now the world is your oyster. Pretty much everything here has a right-click interaction bubble, so we can pick the spinach leaves. We can ignite the spinach if we want to. There is a lot of things that we can do. Now let's talk about the things that we can't do. So sadly, this is where we really feel like where we really feel the the beta sta status of the game. So when we go down here, you we will quickly notice crafting or butchering isn't activated yet. Building isn't activated yet. So that is. Uh, that is really, really, really a bummer. So, 
we can't interact with the world properly. But what makes the prop the, the situation really um, bad, I think, <laughs> I can't put it in different words, is the fact that we cannot even trade. So all the trading things are currently also blocked because obviously the trading menu isn't programmed yet, which makes the entire interaction with the world very one-sided. We can kill everything, we can loot around the world, but, uh, you know, we can't build anything. We can't even craft or, 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 or butcher anything, so that's a bit of a tragic thing. This makes this whole adventure mode experience a little bit shallow, and for me, as somebody who has no experience with a previous version, well, it's a uh, bit of a disappointment but i don't want to put it down that harsh because you know it is what it is it, it is a, a a wonderful combat uh, system that allows you to pull off things that i normally would need a dm of, of my pen and paper group when and for you know that's really amazing i can't just punch out the dude's left tooth on the right the left tooth on the lower side of his, uh, you know, it's crazy. That is really cool, but apart from that, there is really not much to do. So, in a sin to, to give a summary about all this, currently, the worst part about the situation here, and I've been playing around a little bit, is that many of these locations have a whole lot of nothing going on inside of them. Uh, it goes as far as I was even searching for the ogre were his cave. I would had a hard time finding the dragon's cave. I I had a hard time finding the occupants of an area. So this is really something where I felt like, yeah, give us at least a mini map. The traveling part works pretty decently, but the, uh, the we need some more tools to keep in to to keep some eye on or environments because you know i'm currently heading towards a combat site okay luckily i i found that the cobalt found me so that is in this regard pretty good but uh i've went through a evil encampment which had screens and screens of empty trenches where there was nothing going on seriously literally nothing so it's a very mixed bag procedural generation is you, you really feel that it does not uh, work equally well at all ends and all in all I really felt like yeah there is there's still some 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 things that need to get done but at the same time I gotta say running around and slaughtering kobolds and uh, such is feeling darned good the combat system is fun it's easy to pick up yet difficult to master and I'm enjoying myself thoroughly with it, especially with the glory details that it offers. It feels though really bad that we don't have crafting, building or trading in any form, because that makes all the things that I'm doing in the world currently very, well, meaningless, sort of. I mean, I do enjoy myself here still because it gives me an opportunity to have a look at all the areas that I was playing with in Fortress mode before. I love the graphical user interface that they've created because it feels good, it feels accessible, it feels understandable, and while I still feel like the inventory management is finicky and all, it's still something that wasn't cooking my brain. I understood what I had to do, and that is a good thing. So my verdict, I gotta give it some time, it ain't done yet. There are some things missing that are way too important for my personal gameplay experience, but it's a uh, heckin' fun to just run around, kill stuff, or get killed by stuff. I got blasted by a dragon, I got hacked into pieces by goblins, I hacked a minotaur into pieces. I had some fun, but I also was wandering around lost and asking myself, where is the fun? Where is the adventure? Just like here, we slaughtered one kobold, but where's the rest of the party? So, I really feel like this is promising, but it's not cooked yet for me, so... Have some fun with it, give it your own spin, go into the beta via Steam Properties and give yourself your own, take your own impression of it. I'm really happy that it's around, but uh, it only made me hungry and waiting for 
more, and I'm kind of sad that it ain't uh, completed yet. But that is literally a good thing, isn't it? So, my friends, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. You can let me know in the comment section what you feel about the adventure mode. I personally can't wait for it to be completed because, you know, it is just so much fun. I want to have more fun. And, well, until then, we're going to have, we're going to use what we can. Leave me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and as usual, check out the description box. Support the channel if you'd be so kind, I'd be the happiest man on earth. And to everybody supporting Icon Gaming, you guys rock. Thanks for being around, and see you all on the next one. Bye bye.